The next step would be taking these shapes and putting them together and start editing them in this way over here. So all of those overlapping circles. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select all of those shapes and I'm going to make a copy of it and put it over here. But then, like a good designer I am, I'm going to come over here and select those, and I'm going to group it. So right-click, group, or Control-G. So in this group over here, I'm going to call it the abstract group. So when I turn that off and on, it's in the abstract box. So in our edit shapes box, we can go ahead and start cutting those shapes out of each other. So I am going to start with the mouth because it is the most annoying looking to me. I don't want an outline or a stroke when I'm doing this, so I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to make those colors black so that it's easier to see. So we can use our Pathfinder tools and do one of those options. I am a personal favorite of just Shift and M as in money and then just holding down alt. And there is that little smile. He looks kind of creepy right now, but we will edit it later. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the eyes. I'm gonna make sure I have both of those overlapping circles selected. I'm removing that stroke. I'm making them black. And again, you can use your pathfinder to create that little wink right there. Um, or you can just do shift M as in money, hold down alt, and remove the parts you do not want. And there is the wink. Same exact thing to make that stripe. Select both circles, remove that stroke, make the fill black, shift and M. Here come the janitors. And then I use alt to cut things out that I need to cut out. Hey guys, sorry, I'm recording a video for my students. You making a video? Yeah. Uh, now somebody come in here in a minute with some trash and stuff. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then there is one version of that, and then we can just go ahead and drag that over, and then I will shrink that down to make it a smaller version as it looks over here. So I don't want to cut these shapes out yet because I still need to edit the body of that cat to look better. So we can go ahead and select this rectangle that represents his body. And the best tool to use to start editing those corners is the direct selection tool. And we can see these little corners over here. One thing to point out is this corner is a lot more rounded than the other three. So I want this one to be isolated. So I'm going to round them to look very similar ah, to how it looks over here. And I think that's pretty close. So now I just want to isolate this one. And in order to do that, I just click once on that dot. I click once and it is highlighted green while the rest are white. So I know that that one is isolated. I just keep zooming in and out so I can reference over here. And now I can click and drag that to make it a lot more rounded, like that body over here. So now that looks how I want it to, and I can place these little stripes on his back better. Okay. So once that is done, I can select all three objects, the two stripes and his body, Shift and M, and then I'm going to remove those outside spots so it looks just like the stripes that we need. Okay, so one other thing is his feet are rounded rectangles as well. They're not just little cubes. So I'm gonna select both of them with my shift and click method, and then I'm gonna have my direct selection tool, and then I'm just gonna start dragging the corners, and it will automatically edit both of those rectangles at the same time, which is exactly what we want to happen. But you have to have both objects selected at the same time. Okay, so the tail. The tail is a little bit more tricky. So what we're gonna do is make sure that circle is selected, and then we're gonna add in some anchor points. But let's first define where we want them and why. So I want to create a point at which I can 
cut this circle because I only want a line to go from point A to point B that ends up over here. So just like it is right here. So I'm going to add an anchor point right under his little foot and I already have one right here so I'm fine with that. Um, if you do not, just go ahead and click another time on this line, on this path, and you can add an anchor point. So once I have my anchor points, I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, and I'm going to click on this one that I made and this one that is over here. So I'm using shift to select both of them, so I only have these two points. And I'm going to click cut. This is going to cut the path at the selected anchor points. So when I do that, this is complete. Oop. When I have my selection tool, do not use your white mouse. Do not use direct. Use the black one, just your selection tool. This is separate from this over here. I'm going to delete that. And all I want is this. So essentially, we have the tail. It's just really skinny. So what we're going to do is it doesn't need a fill, it just needs a really thick tail. Okay, so, perfect, right? Except for that little end. He has a little bump on his tail, on the end, it's rounded. So what we're gonna do is this line, when it is still selected, we're gonna come to our Properties window, our panel. If you can't find it, Window, Properties. And you're gonna click on Stroke. Oh, why did it do that? And with the cap, you're going to click on rounded cap. And so look what it did. It rounded those tails. So it's kind of going under in a way that I don't want it to. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit better and manipulate it to look like there's did. OK. And there we go. We edited those shapes. One thing we didn't do that I did in the other version was add in this little triangle back there, um, like I did right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that because it's got the light purple on top of the dark purple. So in this one, I'm just going to make a copy over, and I'm going to make it bigger. But I'm going to make it bigger like perfectly. So I'm holding down shift when I do that. And then this rectangle needs to be above it, so I'm moving it. So you kind of have it overlapping like that. And the um, smart thing to do is make sure that they are lined up in this direction and right here. So that's why you wanted to hold down shift to scale it perfectly of that copy. So again, I'm going to make a copy of that triangle holding down shift to scale it perfectly and then you can overlap them but to make my life easier so that I know it's the perfect on both sides I'm just making a copy and I'm going to reflect them so that they're just exact versions of each other okay so go ahead and save that we're gonna select everything group it and this one is called edit shapes. Okay, so file save or control s, whatever you want to do, and then head on to the next part.